to. And we're looking forward to what, hallelujah, God is going to speak into our life and our spirit in Jesus' name. Open up your Bible, if you would, to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, chapter 20. And for your hearing, we're going to read verses 19 through 22. The Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 22. Hallelujah, we ask that you would stand for the reading and the hearing of the Holy Word. We ask that you would stand for the reading and the hearing of God's Holy Word. Gospel of John, chapter 20, turn to it in your paper Bible. Turn to it in your phone Bible, your iPad, your Samsung, Samsung. <laughs> John chapter 20, verses 19 through 22. When you got it, somebody say, I got it. I got it. Hallelujah. I'll be reading from the ESV English Standard Version. It reads as follows. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked yes. where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, yes. Jesus came and stood among them yes. and said to them, peace be with you. Amen. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. People of God said, amen. Amen. I need somebody just to hollow this, repeat after me. You got to say it like you mean it. Somebody say, thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Jesus. One more time, I didn't hear you. Somebody say, thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Jesus. One more time, somebody say, thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Jesus. If you mean that, somebody just clap your hands and give God praise right where you are. Everybody remain standing. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory. We ask right now that you would move in this place. Lord, we need to hear from you. We need a word from you. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you would move like never before. Even use me, hide me behind your cross. Fresh anointing, fall fresh. That your word will go forth with boldness and clarity. And it will accomplish the very thing that you have set out for it to do before the foundation of the world. Father, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to receive like never before, that we would take your word and that you would convict us, instruct us, motivate us, move us. Lord, equip us for this season. Raise up a church, Lord God, that's walking on fire for you. Lord, if you would just move in our hearts, pour out your spirit, and get us ready, Lord God, for what you have for us to do and who you have for us to be. We thank you in advance that the devil is already defeated, and we thank you for the victory that we already have, and we give you the glory and all the praise. So we ask right now that you would speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We ask it all in Jesus' name. People of God shouted, amen. 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 You may take your seats. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe that we're in a season where God is calling his people to go higher in him and deeper in him like never before. This is not a season that we have seen before. We are coming towards the end and God is putting a sense of urgency in his people because time is short and time is running out. And we have to understand that this is the moment and the time that God wants to use you exactly the way he created you. Somebody say amen. Amen. And we are coming to the end. And there is a greater sense of urgency in what God has to do. And I feel it and I see it being done across the body of Christ. He is calling us out of our comfort zones. 
He's calling us out what is convenient. He is calling us out of what is familiar. And you have to understand that he is calling you higher and he's calling you deeper. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why there's some things that you used to do don't feel the same no more. We talk over here. That's maybe I've got. There, there's the, the people that, that you, you went to go do things that you're accustomed to doing, but now it doesn't feel the same because your heart is changing and God is bringing you to a new direction. Those friend groups that you used to fit in don't fit no more because God is calling you to a different direction and a deeper place and a deeper relationship with God. Anybody ever been hungry and the thing that you eat still leaves you hungry? And sometimes God said there are some things in your life that you've been going through to feed you, but in this season it don't feed you no more because you're craving something deeper than what the world can give you. Am I talking to somebody here? There's somebody here that your appetite is changing. I know I'm talking to one person. The thing that you used to, that now you have a different kind of desire. Uh, the bar is boring now. And now you want something that's going to sustain you and give you a spiritual high instead of some natural thing that's going to drive you deeper into your problems. I'm going to preach it like I feel it, but that's okay. Somebody is sitting where you are and you have an anointed spiritual restlessness. Uh, God, but man, there's something missing. Anybody, I know I'm going to work and coming home, but there's something missing. Uh, and everything you go to touch on the earth don't satisfy what's missing. And God is saying, there is a void in you that only I can fill. And I'm calling you to go deeper and I'm calling you to go higher in me. Because when you go higher in me, then I can use you the way I want to use you. Isn't it a blessing to know that when you leave this earth, God would have used you and you would have been the exact instrument you were called to be and you would not die young, you would not die old, but you would die empty because every gift and every calling would be used by God. Everything in you that he put into you is going to be used by the Heavenly Father and life change is going to take place as a result. I need one person to say amen. Oh God. Hallelujah. But here is a key ingredient that God revealed to me this week that you're going to need if you want to walk in elevation. Let me make sure I got the right church. Is there anybody here that wants to go higher in God? You're, no, you're not content with where you are now. You know that there is more. If you know that somebody say there's more. There has to be more than this. And you know there's more. And now you get frustrated when people call you by the name of who you used to be. You said, will you stop calling me that? I know that there's more to me than what I used to do. There's more to me than where I am now. Be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Well, somebody say amen. amen. But here is a major key to your elevation. You want to hear it? Please take your pen and pad. I need everybody to write this down because this is going to change everything. Hallelujah. There's a necessary ingredient that you're going to need if you're going to go higher in God. It's right here. Write this down. Consistent gratitude is a major key to your elevation. Y'all missed it. I'm going to say it again. Consistent gratitude is a major key to your elevation. This is very important that you understand. Why do you say consistent gratitude? Hallelujah. Because if you do not have consistent gratitude, watch what happens. And I'm going to tell you about this consistent gratitude. It will keep you, if you have it, it's going to keep you from the rut of situational frustration. Can I say that again? Did y'all hear what I said? Consistent gratitude keeps you from the rut of situational frustration. Y'all know what some situational frustration is? Situational frustration is when you have a problem in your life that has become so heavy. It's so weighty that it ends up consuming your whole reality. Yeah. And you can't seem to get past it. And every time you wake up, it's on your mind. Every time you wake up, you can't break free from it. Maybe it was the diagnosis from the doctor's office that it was a negative report. And now you're wondering if you're ever going to be healed. You're wondering if God is ever going to move. I don't know if it's of that relationship hurt where somebody broke your heart and now you're trying to get right and get better, but you can't stop thinking about what's wrong. Maybe it's that financial situation. It seems like the bills are due 
and the, the, the ends ain't ending, and, then, and it's not getting met, and we get to the point that we're frustrated that all we do, instead of having room to give God praise, we are stuck in the rut of situational frustration. Has anybody ever been there before? Maybe it's in your marriage when y'all are trying to work some things through, but you can't get past the thing that is broken. And what ends up happening is our focus becomes one dimensional. And the only thing that we can see in front of us is broken pieces. The only thing that we can see in front of us is what's not working. The only thing we can see in front of us is what is missing. And every time we wake up, we are looking at everything from the perspective of our broken situation. Has anybody ever been there before? And sometimes it's hard for you to have praise because you're too busy, so deep in your discouragement, you can't get past what took place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But can I remind you of a couple of things? See, it was about 2,000 years ago where God had your sin in mind. God had your situations in mind. God had your storm in mind. And he sent his son to die and rise again so that you may live. And your sins are forgiven as you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. So you can have a choice of looking at your situation, but you can also have a choice of praising God at the revelation that he is good. You can, you can praise God at the revelation that his mercy endures forever. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? See, when you walk in consistent gratitude, you don't have time to be depressed. When you walk in consistent gratitude, you don't have time to be defeated because you're so busy thanking God for what he already has done that you're not worried about what needs to be done because what God already did gave you the confidence for what God is going to do and what God is doing right now. Does anybody ever know about consistent gratitude? Consistent gratitude, you can be in the midst of the storm, but tell God thank you for getting you out of the last storm. And you start to reminisce and go down memory lane as you pull me off the streets of D.C. How you got the alcohol taste out of my mouth. And surely you wouldn't bring me this far to leave me now. So what do I look like being broke, busted, and disgusted and wondering if God is going to show up? He already showed up when they looked in the tomb and it was empty. He already showed up when he rose with all power in his hands. He already showed up when the promises of God had been before you. So what do we look like so frustrated in our situation that we don't have room to praise God? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But can I tell you something? When you are in consistent gratitude, it makes room. See, the problem is not that you're going through a situation. God says, I know you got a situation. I just need you to make room. Y'all missing this. Can I talk about it? See, when you have a situation of frustration, the enemy wants only for you to look at what's wrong. But when you have consistent gratitude, when you begin to praise God for what he's done, you make room to hear his voice. Because you're now, you're not stuck in your frustration. Now you're open to receive the new revelation of God. When you have consistent gratitude, you make room. You can be hurt, but you can still be used. You can be hurt, but you can still be blessed. You can be hurt, but you're not distracted by your hurt. And you can still go before God. Oh, the devil gets mad when he comes against you and hurts you, but you still can pray for somebody else. He thought that you were going to be stuck in the frustration, but here you go. You intercede for somebody else's stuff. You know why? Because it's one thing to wonder if God is going to heal you, but it's another thing to say, Lord, thank you that you are a healer. So I don't have to wonder if you're going to heal me because healing is part of your identity. And if I know you, my gratitude says, I already know who you are. And the Bible says, you shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. So if there is a need that I have, God already told me I am the great I am. If you need a healing, God says I am. If you need a breakthrough, God says I am. If you need help and a comfort and a peace, God says that I am. So I'm looking at who God is, not about what I need. Because if I have a need, who God is is already supplying my need. So I can walk in consistent gratitude. Too many Christians are waiting for the breakthrough to give God praise. 
situational Christians are waiting for the thing to get sunny, and as soon as the storm clouds roll away, I'm going to give them a praise. But anybody give them, give them a rainy praise, a thunderstorm praise, a hurricane praise, a tornado praise, when you didn't know what was taking place, but in your relationship, you said, I have gratitude. If you allow me to go through the tornado, that means you depositing something in me to withstand the storm. I might bend, but I may not. I might, I'm not going to break. I may cry, but I'm not going to lose my mind. I may get frustrated, but I'm not going to be defeated. I might be discouraged, but I'm still victorious in Jesus' name. When you walk in consistent gratitude, you can always tell God, thank you for what you're going through. You know what else you do? You start doing crazy stuff. You start getting excited about the storm. You're about to be like, oh, snap. If you allow me to go through that, look at what you're about to prepare me for. Oh, I must have a great anointing if I'm going through that kind of thing. Oh, if you allow the enemy to attack me like this, you must be getting me ready to be anointed like that. And I'm looking forward to the preparation. I'm looking forward to the incubation. I'm looking forward to the process that God has me in. So I don't have time to be frustrated because the thing that frustrates you, God is using to purify you. I need somebody to give God glory. I need somebody to give God glory. Because your key is going to be consistent gratitude. Hallelujah. You can't say thank you and complain at the same time. You can't say I appreciate you and be like, God, where are you at? You don't have time to do both. Here is what I'm going to do. I need two people to at least agree with me here. I'm going to make a decision spending my time praising God no matter what I'm going through. Is there somebody here? On Mrs. Resurrection Sunday, I'm going to spend my time telling God thank you instead of telling God what he didn't do. It's as if he's wrong, as if he ever lost the patient. Do you know who you're dealing with? And it's an honor to be in his presence, so I'm just going to tell him thank you. So drop your hands and give God praise. I'm trying to preach the second service. Amen. Watch this. So God says it's important that you walk in consistent gratitude. And this is what we're going to learn from this text. God is going to teach us through how he revealed himself to his disciples. Uh, some keys that we need to walk in our elevation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Can we go through the word of God? Yes, sir. The Bible says, John chapter 20, verse 19. On the evening yes, sir. of that day. Uh -huh. So this was not early Sunday morning. Yeah. As the Baptist preacher was saying. <laughs> this is Sunday evening. So at this point, Jesus had already gotten up with all power in his hands. Uh-huh. He was already up. And you would think if you found a disciple of Christ during that time, yes. they would be jumping for joy. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't you think yes, sir. if just the one that got up, uh -huh. he actually got up just like he said he would? Yes, sir. You would think that you would be, man, like, oh, that's awesome. He actually got up. He did it. You think that they would be having a praise party. Yes, sir. But how do we know that's not what happened? Yeah, can, can you read a text with me? Yes, we just in the Bible. Look what he said. On the evening, the first day of the week, the reports had already gone out that Jesus had already rose up. Uh -huh. The Bible said, not only did they not have a praise party, but all the doors were locked. Yeah. They had their ring cameras on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Who that right there? <laughs> The notification. Oh, that's just the wind. I was just the wind, homie. We could. They, they're looking out because they're thinking they are in danger because if the one that they followed had to suffer to that degree, what did they think was going to happen to them? So they were fearful of the religious leaders. So they locked away, and the Bible says at the greatest time when they had a praise report that they would never see, that that was the time that they were walking in fear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But I want to get to this point, so I want you to see something. But here's what I love. Right at the point where they were walking in fear, Jesus showed up. Yes, sir. And the Bible said the doors were locked. Yes, sir. But Jesus showed up. Yeah, yeah. Aren't you glad that Jesus is not bound by your barriers? Yeah. Aren't you glad that he is not restricted by your limitations? And things that's locked up. 
The Bible said he just appeared among them. And here's the part that I love. He appeared and he said peace. Wait. He appeared and he said peace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Point number one, write this down. I want you to see this. This is something you're going to go in elevation of God. Number one, the presence of God must be a top priority. The presence of God must be a top priority. Can I tell you what happened in his presence? The Bible says Jesus came and stood among them. Hallelujah. And he said, peace be with you. Now, can you understand that the people that he was speaking to were the same people that left him high and dry? Yes, sir. Yeah. Do y'all remember the story? He told them, fellas, I need y'all to watch and pray. It was time for them to watch and pray. They were <laughs> a couple of them had CPAP machines on, all kind of stuff. They, were, they didn't have CPAP on. See y'all think I'm just pressing the chat. See y'all listening. They was knocked out. And they said, watch and pray. And they went. And you would think that the people that said they were going to be riding or die were going to stick with them. But in the heat of the moment, they were nowhere to be found. We know what Jesus could have said. He could have got in their presence and been like, where was y'all at? I needed Peter. I thought you said you weren't going to never leave. But there you go denying me three times as if you never knew who I was. Where were y'all at? I told y'all to pray, but y'all scattered in fear. Where were y'all at? I can't believe this. You know what? That's cool. I got something. He didn't say that. He had every right to call them out on their stuff, but he didn't. See, sometimes people are afraid to get in the presence of God because he thinks that God is going to condemn them for how they fell short. Sometimes people don't. Oh, can I talk on Easter? Hallelujah. See, this, I'm sorry. Resurrection Sunday, strike Easter from the record. We don't do bunnies and Easter yeah. rabbits. But sometimes people are hesitant to come back to church because they feel, I've been messed up. I've been doing things wrong. And God don't want nothing to do with me. But when they got in the presence of God, even though they weren't faithful, the only thing God said to them was, peace be unto you. Yeah. What kind of God is this that looks beyond your faults and sees your needs? What kind of God is this that's not going to beat you over the head? He says, I know you can't fix yourself. That's why I have come, that they may have life and life more abundantly. Ma'am, sir, if you haven't been at church in a while, God is not saying, where are you at? God is saying, peace be unto you. He's not saying, how come you haven't been doing this? And how come you haven't been doing this? He says, peace be unto you. Because in that moment, the disciples were walking in fear. And the most important thing to Jesus was not their flaws, but their inner condition. Aren't you glad that you serve a God that no matter what you did, he had grace enough to speak to your inner condition? He said, peace be unto you, because they were walking in the spirit of fear. Are you hearing it? He says, listen, before I can speak to you, I've got to deal with what's on the inside of your heart. I've got to deal with what's on the inside, because the only way you're going to be changed is to let God deal with you. God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. See, this might not mean that much for people who always got it together. I'm not quite sure. I see a few new faces in here. I don't know who I got in the room. It makes me cry when I hear that God just said peace. He didn't beat them over the head because somebody knows what it's like to be hung over on a Saturday night. But God still says, I love you anyway. I'm giving you an opportunity to turn it around. I'm going to reveal myself to you. I know you have a past, but I love you. God says, I have a past too. In the past, I died and rose again so you can have a future. The presence of God must be a top priority. Are you hearing this? This is important. And you know what else? What I love about God? They heard the reports. So they heard that Jesus was alive. Yeah. But that wasn't enough for Jesus. 
He says, I don't want you to just hear about it. Yeah. I want you to see me face to face. Yeah. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And it's not enough to know something about Jesus because you heard grandmama say it. Mm. You're in a season where you got to know him for yourself. Yeah. And God's is saying, nope. I don't, I, I did, yep, I did a miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I want you to know the Messiah. Uh-huh. Yep, I am able to do it. Because if you only know him for the miracle, that's the only thing you're going to do when you call him. You're going to ask him to do something. But there's somebody here that puts his presence as a priority. Yeah. Sometimes when he comes in, his presence is more than enough. Yeah. Because can I tell you, the Bible said when his presence was felt, he said, peace be unto you. And the Bible said they were all of a sudden very glad to see the Lord. Yeah. But can I tell you, the dangerous threat on the outside was still there. Yeah. So Jesus didn't remove the threat. He just moved and gave them peace. So he didn't come and say, you know what? When y'all go out there, you ain't got to worry. It's going to be all right. They were overjoyed not because God changed the situation on the outside. They were overjoyed because God said change the situation on the inside. And when you have the presence of God, you're grateful that even when you come out of the presence of God and he didn't answer your prayer. Because sometimes it's not about answering the prayer. It's about receiving peace. Sometimes it's not about God moving on a situation. It's about giving you peace that you can make it through the situation. Sometimes it's not about God rescuing you and pulling you out of something. Sometimes it's about God keeping you while you're still in something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we then begin to put premium on peace. What is peace? I'm not talking about peace because you feel better because you ate good at Ruth Chris. I'm not talking about peace because you're chilling with your wife and she's cool and all of that. I'm not talking about peace because you got a promotion and you got some more zeros on you. That's not the peace that I'm talking about. The peace that I'm talking about is that peace that doesn't make sense. It's that peace where you should have lost your mind but you're still keeping it together. It's that kind of peace that surpasses all understanding where you should have been broken and the situation should have took you out. You got abused as a child but you're walking boldly empowered, healed, and you don't even look like what you've been through. It's that kind of peace that when God is working it out, you still have a smile on your face and the devil scratching his head. I'm throwing everything at her, but she keeps coming to church. I keep throwing everything at him, but he keeps raising his hand. I keep trying to destroy the marriage, but they keep getting closer and they keep going to higher levels and they can't understand it. And you know what? You can just say it was just peace. Somebody say peace. peace. See, peace is underrated. Peace is something that you take for granted. But sometimes I ain't got to have a whole lot of friends. Just give me some peace and I'm going to be all right. I ain't got to have a whole lot of money. But give me some peace and I'm going to be all right. The situation ain't got to already be fixed. But just give me your peace and I'll be able to make you do anything. Oh, somebody give God glory right now. Uh, somebody holler peace. Uh huh. So watch this. We're believing God for His peace. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can leave the presence of God and be so filled up and go back to the same situation. Oh, you know what God told me? So, oh, somebody needs to hear this. Somebody discouraged and said, "Lord, how come you haven't answered my prayer?" He says, "I did answer your prayer. I gave you the answer." was not God doing it. The answer was you getting the presence of God and God telling you to speak to it. I gotta keep moving, y'all. This is is somebody, this is for somebody in this room. The reason why you're still in it is because you're waiting for God to fix it and God's waiting for you to speak to it. You're busy talking about it, but you're not speaking to it. Who is this for? Who is it? I got to move on with my sermon now. Yeah, God's keeping me here. You raise your hand, please. I'm trying to move on the rest, but God is saying, no, park here. There's somebody that's been spending time. I'm just waiting on Jesus. No, nope, God says, you know what? I'm not going to change the situation, but I'm going to give you a word. <laughs> I'm just going to give you one word. And all you need is one word. And when you speak that one word of your situation, it's going to change everything. Somebody say amen. amen. 
I got to move, y'all. I got to move. So watch this. The presence of God must be top priority. Yes, you do know that praise and worship is not just a glorified sing along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we treat praise and worship like, oh, we're going to sing this. Oh, that's my name. How great is our God? Okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do it. Oh, Victoria's anointed. Oh, man. She's saying, here's my worship. That's my song. Oh, let's all sing along. It's not about a sing along. It's about the presence of the Lord. It's not about a sing along. We're believing God's presence to inhabit the praises of his people as we come together, two or three together in one accord in agreement. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. I got to move this, y'all. Watch this. Look at point number two. First, he said, peace be with you. Verse 20, he said, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. I love it how God shows up. When God shows up, he wants you to know without a shadow of a doubt it was him. Amen. Yeah. He said peace, and they recognized his voice. But he says, nope, I need you to see the hands. I need you to see the side. Because when you have a real encounter with God, there's going to be no denial that it was God himself that was with you. Are you hearing me? That's why y'all testimonies be like they are. Because the testimony, God says, I'm going to show up in such a way where you can't give anything else credit. No, it wasn't a ghost. It was the spirit. It was the king of kings and the Lord of lords. No, it wasn't your intellect. It was the king of kings and Lord of lords. No, you couldn't get out of it by yourself. But God says, I'm going to show up in your life in such a way there'll be no denying it was him. Oh, somebody say amen. Are we doing all right so far? Okay, point number one, the presence of God must be top priority. Here's point number two. I like this. Look at verse 21. Jesus, watch this, said to them again. Somebody say again. again. Peace be with you. Didn't you just say that in verse 19? Yes. But the Bible says he said to them again, peace be with you. Yeah. But watch this. He says, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Are you hearing it? Even though, the, even as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Yes. Here's what you have to understand. Point number two, please write this down. And God has given you something in this point number two. That a lot of you are praying to receive. And God says, I already gave it to you. Uh -oh, you're wondering what that is. You're praying to receive. You ask God, please give me this. And God says, you already have it. Point number two. The Lord has blessed you with connection and direction. Amen. Can I say it again? The Lord has blessed you with connection and direction. It's right there in verse 21. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. The first time he said peace, he was speaking to their fear on the inside. The second time he said peace, he was speaking to their connection to let you know in order for you to walk in the right direction, you have to have the right connection. Amen. He says, peace be with you. He's not just talking about the peace of God. He's talking about peace with God. Amen. You hear what I say? Yes, sir. And in order for you to walk in God's direction, you can't have God's direction but not have God's connection. Oh, God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm trying to help somebody with this. This is important because don't assume that you have peace with God if you've met, never made a decision to give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you hearing this? He's saying, peace be unto you. It is available for you, but the key to your life is your connection. If you have said yes to Jesus Christ, you have a connection and you have a direction. Are you hearing it? Anybody ever wondered, Lord, what am I supposed to do? What am I called to do? What is my purpose? God says you have a connection and you have a direction. So, uh-oh, the enemy's about to be mad. He's about to be mad. Oh, good for him. So, here's what the enemy does. Everything that the enemy does in your life is for the purpose of disrupting your connection. And therefore, it will disrupt your direction. Uh -oh. Let me say that again. Y'all missed it. Everything that the enemy does in your life is for the purpose 
of disrupting your connection so you will not have the peace of God and peace with God and it will therefore by default disrupt your direction because the only way you can receive God's direction is if you have God's connection. Amen. Oh, can I help somebody here? So what the enemy does is he comes in and he disrupts your peace. Oh, are you hearing it? Yeah. He allows situations to come so that your peace will be disrupted and you won't know what to do. And instead of you having direction, you have confusion. Wow. Am, am I teaching? Yeah. Instead of having direction, you have confusion. Uh -huh. There are too many people that God has given you an ordained direction, but you're walking in confusion. Uh -huh. Because you allow God to disrupt your peace, therefore disrupting your connection. Mm. Oh God. Can I talk about it? Can we make it a little bit more? See, the way... Am I talking right, people? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. looking like, oh, I've never heard of that, Pastor. Yeah, I don't. Your connection gets disrupted when you allow a situation to get you off track. Come on, come on. And then you have confusion. And in the midst of the confusion, the enemy comes and sells you a false peace. Yes, yes. Anybody have real peace before? Raise your hand. Uh oh. Anybody ever have false peace? Raise your hand. Uh oh. Y'all bold in here. Because the enemy always wants to pervert what God provides. Amen. Oh, I'm teaching. So, what he does, he says, I'm going to bring a situation where you have lack. But if you're walking in confusion, you might be open to the devil's solution instead of God's. Amen. The devil's solution is going to bring you a false peace. It feels good in the moment, but it wears off. Yeah. I'm trying to speak to somebody. You've been relying on the wrong stuff. Yeah. Yet, it brings you a false peace. So now when you have it, it seems right, but it ends in destruction. It seems right, but instead of you going higher, you're going lower. It seems right, but the more you do it, the more toxic it gets. It seems right that the more you need to quit, the more addictive it becomes. Am I talking to somebody here? We've got to understand that God has already given us connection and direction. And can I tell you, the enemy does not have power to disrupt your peace. You've given the enemy way too much credit. He can't take God's peace away from you. The direction didn't come yesterday when you asked God at 1235. The direction came before you were born. This is why God told Jeremiah, before you were in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I sanctified you. I ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. I already gave you direction even before you knew you were lost. I already gave you direction even before you knew you needed the Lord. He already gave you direction. And now when you said yes to Lord, you have two things that the devil can't take. Your connection and your direction. So if he can't take it from you, stop giving it to him. If we talk in the presence of God, take back what the devil stole. He can't steal nothing from you. You have a head of protection on your life. He can't steal nothing from you. If he allows something, God allows something to be taken away, I promise it's coming back 10, 30, 60, 100 fold. If you've lost something and God has allowed you to lose something, God says, I'm making room for something greater in your life. Stop giving the devil your peace. Stop giving the world your joy. Stop being so defunctive and stop being a victim and say, it's never working out for me. It's never going to happen. You already have connection and you already have direction. So pick yourself up. Dust yourself off. Lift your hands up. It's not over till God says it's over. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Can I promise out in this season? In this season, the people of God will not give away what's rightfully theirs. Amen. Hello? Yes, we will not give away what's rightfully ours. If God's given us peace, we're going to walk in it. If God has given us his anointing, we're going to walk in it. Somebody say amen. amen. The Lord has blessed you with connection and direction. 
This is why. Oh, watch this. This is crazy. Who was he talking to? He was talking to the same disciples that left them high and dry. Here we go again. First of all, you mean Jesus not only said, peace be with you, but he also said, as God sent me, I'm sending you. Jesus, you sure you want to send them? They dropped the ball when you sent them the last time. But God says, no, I'm sending you. Is somebody here grateful that you ain't got to have it all together for God to choose to use you? Is anybody grateful in the room that you ain't got to have the suit? You ain't got to have all the Bible verses where you know all 66 verses by heart? There's some that can stumble every now and then. And God says, I'm going to pick you up and still use you. Some people that don't get it right all the time. Sometimes they attitude get the best of them. But they're still a child of God. And God is doing a work in them. Aren't you glad that God used people who are unqualified? Oh, God. If you qualified, then congratulations and God bless you. But I'm in the front line of the unqualified. You think I'm preaching because I got a halo over my head? I'm preaching because it was the grace of God that decided not to cut me off when I was in my sin and in my mess. And I'm grateful. He can use an old wretch like me. He can surely use you. So we're grateful when he says, I'm sending you. When you realize how unqualified you are, you're just grateful that God calls your name. So right now, I rebuke the I don't feel like it spirit in Jesus' name. Oh, God. Y'all mad at me in resurrection. I rebuke the I don't feel like it spirit. Y'all see the I don't feel like it spirit? You, you made every meeting on time. But it came on Sunday morning, the I don't feel like it spirit rose up. Okay. I rebuke it now because the I don't feel like it spirit is going to be replaced by the thank you Jesus spirit. Amen. The thank you Jesus spirit says I was unqualified, but thankful I wasn't disqualified. The thank you Jesus spirit says you still want to use me in spite of myself? That, this, that, I, that, I don't, that, I'm, that I'm unqualified, but I'm grateful. That thank you Jesus spirit says you still love me in spite of me. Still love me. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. The Lord has blessed you yes. with connection yes, yes. and direction. Yes, yes. And he still sent out the people who didn't get it right. Mm. Yeah. Oh, but you got to keep reading your Bible. Yeah. Homie, you got to keep reading your Bible. Yeah. Right around verse Ma in Matthew chapter 14, mm -hmm. you saw Peter walking on water, but then getting distracted by the wind. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, he started sinking. You saw Peter, at the end of the gospel, cut somebody's ear off. You better keep reading your Bible. In Acts chapter 5, the Bible said, people will bring their sick and leave them on the street praying that Peter's shadow would walk by and they would be healed. You think I'm making it up? Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3, there was a lame man. Peter, James, and John came and Peter, who was bumbling and stumbling in the Gospels in the book of Acts, he said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Don't judge a book by a health, unhealthy chapter. Don't judge a book by what I went through back there. God says there's another book coming. There's another chapter coming in your life. Well, you got to miss the mark back there, but you're walking in boldness in the future. The same one that couldn't get it together is the one that's consistent in their prayer life. Walking in freedom. Walking in the Holy Ghost. Walking and doing obedience. And doing what God has called them to be. Stop judging people by what they look like now because God says I still want to use them and I still want to get glory out of their life. You're not going to recognize them in the future. They're going to be so on fire for God. They're going to be so anointed. They're going to have fruit in their life. They're going to have people's lives being changed. And it was the same one that you saw addicted one time back here, but now they're filled with the Holy Spirit up here. You can't judge a person by their last season because God is not through with them. Amen. I say amen. amen. Are y'all all right? We got to go home, y'all. Watch this. Here's the last part. Verse 22. And when he said this, the Bible said, he breathed on them. Come on. He said he breathed on them. And you know what he said? Receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Bible says, 
when he says, I'm sending you. Before you leave, I got to give you something. Yeah, yeah. He breathed on them. Y'all don't know how critical that is. Yeah. And the Bible said he received, the, they say receive the Holy Spirit. Point number three, your purpose is connected to God's power. Did you hear what I said? Your purpose is connected to God's power. It's right there in the text. He says, when he said, I'm sending you, the Bible said he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. See, here's what you got to understand. Sometimes, I thought this about this in 9 o'clock crowd. Sometimes you be asking God what he wants you to do. And then God finally tell you what he wants you to do. And you give him the sanctified response. And the sanctified response is, huh? <laughs> Anybody ever said, huh? When you actually heard the person, yeah. but you said, huh? As if you didn't. Because you're trying to get time to process and regroup your thoughts. And you think about how you go, y'all yeah, don't look at me like that. Y'all know y'all be doing this too much. And folks like, you heard what I said. But sometimes we tell God, instead of telling God yes, we tell God huh? Because the thing that he showed you was so much bigger than you. And you say, oh, you must not be. I know you wouldn't tell God this. In your mind, you think, I know you wouldn't. <laughs> I've never done that before. Nobody in my family preached. So how are you calling me to preach? You're calling me to do something. I don't even like to be out front. I just call somebody out. And he's calling you to do something, and you're not doing it because all you can think of what you can't do. But your way, when God tells you to go, and when you go in your purpose, you have to have the power of God because the purpose is connected to God's power. That's why there's many people on the sidelines now because you said, I can't do that. And God says, you know what? You're right. You can't do that. But you can do it if I go with you. You can do it if my presence is on your life. You can't do it if my anointing goes before you. You can't do it it's if you open up your mouth and it's not your singing voice, but it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit that's moving through your life. You can't do it when you go to preach and it's not just your clever words, but it's a boldness and it's a power of God saying what's on God's mind. See, by yourself, you are nothing. But with God, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. That's why there's somebody here where your purpose is has been so intimidating to you. You know why? Because your flesh can't comprehend it. Your flesh is saying, man, it ain't no way. I don't have that capacity. But God says, I don't want to use your flesh. I want to use the spirit that's inside of you. So when you go to do it, I'm going to go with you because if you go by yourself, it might sound good, but it's not going to be no fruit. It might sound good, but there will be no transformation. But when God shows up, the anointing is going to break the yoke. When God shows up, the anointing is going to cast down, tear down strongholds. When the anointing shows up, he's going to break through the barrier of unforgiveness. When God shows up, he's going to turn a hardened heart to a softened heart for God. When God shows up, he's going to take that barrier of addiction and bring it to be filled with the power of God. You got to understand, you are all right by yourself. You're pretty smart and you're pretty charismatic. But if you open up yourself to be used by God and have the anointing of God fill you up to overflow, there's nothing that will be impossible for you. Because with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Yeah. Like tap your hands and say amen. amen. So I'm believing God right now that there's somebody here in this season that you are going to say yes to whatever God tells you to do because you don't have to go by yourself. It's the power of God that's going to go with you. You don't have to do it on your own. It's the power of God that's going to go with you. And God says, receive the Holy Spirit. And it's very important that you walk in it and you do it. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's something again. I need y'all to hear me loud and clear. Something that you already have, but it means nothing if you don't walk in it. There's too many people who are anointed and seated. There's too many people 
that have the power of God with them but are dormant. There's too many people that have the power of God. There's a life-changing thing in you, but you're silent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God wants to use the people of God in this time and in this era. I was talking to Nana Cockcraft. Some of y'all know this. If y'all been in Freedom Movement a while, uh, there's this truck that be showing up at my house just about every day. It's called Amazon. And I'm trying to understand how in every day it seems like without fail, it's at least two or three packages that say Teresa Twigs on them. I'm just, when do you have the time? I'm not alone. Somebody's pointing. Okay, okay, thank you. We need a support group. This is crazy. I feel better. Okay, I'm encouraged. All these packages, I'm at work, I'm looking at the ring camera. I see somebody walking up to the carrying three things. Walking away. I'm just like, yeah, leave. And she orders something, and the thing that's delivered already belongs to her. Already has her name on it. But it would be sad that she would complain, where's my package? If she never opened up the door and picked it up. There's too many people that are complaining, God, where are you? Where are you at? I need you to give me what I need. God said I already delivered it to you. I can put it at your doorstep, but I can't make you open the door. I can put it at your doorstep, but I can't make you open the package. I can put it at your doorstep, but I'm not going to put it together for you because I put strength in your hand to put together the thing that I have for you. And you can't complain to God that you don't have it if you didn't open up the door. You can't complain that it's not there if you didn't open up the box. You can't complain it's not there if you picked up the pieces out the box. And God says, I've already given you an anointing. All you got to do is open the door and open it up. I've already given you power. All you got to do is open the door and open it up. I've already given you my spirit. All you got to do is open the door and open it up. Am I talking to somebody here? I'm not going to spend time on what I don't have. I know God has given me everything that I need. I know I have a fresh anointing. I know I have a fresh wind of his spirit. I'm not going to just sit on the couch and wait. I'm going to step up, open the door, open the box, and receive what God has. Stand your feet right now. We got to get up out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm grateful. Because of the resurrection, God already worked even before you asked him to work. He already did it before you asked him to do it. Oh, I need somebody to say amen. There's something that you already had before you knew you needed it. That's why you don't have to wonder if God knows where you are. He knew where you are. But even before you got there, he already gave you what you need. Here's what I need everybody to do. If there's one or two people that got to thank you, Jesus, in your spirit, we're going to let God have the thank you, Jesus, right now. Hallelujah. I don't know if it's you that's walking in fear, but I need you to trade in your fear for thank you, Jesus. I don't know if it's you that's walking in depression. I need you to pray, trade in your depression for a thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The song said, I'm trading my sorrows. <laughs> I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading, I feel the Lord, my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And all that goes after that is, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. So if somebody has to thank you in your spirit, I dare you to open up your mouth and say, I'm not going to be discouraged because I got to thank you in my spirit. I'm not going to quit because I got to thank you in my spirit. I'm not going to give up on my marriage because I got to thank you in my spirit. I'm going to manage my finances because I got to 
I gotta thank you in my spirit. I'm gonna keep praying over my children, and I gotta thank you in my spirit. I'm not gonna believe a doctor's report, and I gotta thank you in my spirit. I'm gonna continue to hold my head high, and I gotta thank you in my spirit. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivered us out of them all. I gotta thank you in my spirit. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I gotta thank you in my spirit. I will fear no evil. I gotta thank you in my spirit. Thou art with me. I gotta thank you in my spirit. I dare something.